Hello, peace and greetings. Happy today. Or yeah, shum. Greetings. Oh, okay. Greetings and happy today. How is everyone? Welcome into the space. Oh, I forgot to add that. Let me add it. We dripping in gold today. Yes, we are dripping in gold. Dripping, dripping, dripping. Oh. Welcome everyone. Welcome. I appreciate y'all joining me and our guest. Uh, let me ping her in. If that's a term. Oh, she's here. Okay, let me pin that. Um, yes, happy today. It's actually Oshun's day. So, you know, what a blessing. What an absolute divine blessing. I want to... Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure the music is right. As we bring our guests in, we're gonna play the music so she can just come in and and vibe. Yes, that is the song I say, Drip in Gold, um, a part of the album Drip in Gold. And I am so happy and excited to be dripping today with Iya Oni Okan. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. How are you today? I'm feeling good. My son just caught a libation for us. He spilled all my water, so, you know, I concentrated. Say. I say, yes, we got to do it. We got to do it. Um, And that that's how that's how we open it up. Mm -hmm. With some only, some only too. <laughs> so, how I've been starting the, the, the lives, I've been doing like a little rapid fire segment. Just a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, just to get warmed up and settled into the space. Um, and they don't necessarily have to do with Oshon or sometimes anything. But <laughs> how it goes is if you answer yes, they're yes and no questions. Um, and if you want to explain more, dive a little deeper into it, you're welcome to, to do that. And then I'll ask the next question as you... Uh, as you finish. So yes, you'll say dripped in gold. And if the answer is no, you'll say fool's gold. Okay. Okay, sweet. 
Um, okay, so Oshun is one of the most known and loved Orisha. Chips and gold. Thank you. Um, Oshun has many children. Do you want more? Okay, that's two <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, Drips and Gold. Drips and Gold. And Drips and Gold. Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> um, have you journeyed to Africa? Fool's Gold, not yet, but I'm on my way. Ashe. It had to be with the right person at the right time i've had many opportunities but it just it had to be right so. Boom, indeed. indeed i love that that's very true mm -hmm. um a body in motion stays in motion that's in goal yeah. life is better when you dance jim tango says you already know <laughs> that's my mantra. I say, I say. Um, thinking is the biggest mistake a dancer could do. Thinking, I would say it depends on if you are performing. Like you have mm -hmm. choreography that you have to remember and you're on stage and you have counts and you have, you know, like I've danced with Machete. So, yes, I'm thinking I'm counting because yeah. I don't want to make a mistake. But when you're dancing for you in your home and in with family and friends, then I would say that thinking is not the best thing. So... That's my answer. Fool's gold. <laughs> um, Ifa traveled the diaspora and became known under different names. Chips and gold. Chips and gold. Ashe. Ashe. So that's our little, that's our little rapid fire segment. Mm -hmm. um, welcome everyone who's come in. Um, this, this month's talk is about Oshun, um, the power of Oshun, who Oshun is, um, the children of Oshun, the energy and essence of Oshun. So I'm happy to have you here today to speak on that. And, um, I, I'm enjoying just hearing about everyone's name and how it came about. Um, mm -hmm. and how it plays a part in their life. So tell us your Osho name, or even just your name, and then your Osho name and what it means. Okay, so my mama given name is Maya Louisa. And my Osho name is Oniokan. And Oniokan, Inukumi Oni means honey. But when put together in the context of Oniokang, it comes to mean owner of the heart. Oh, shit. And what it means for me is that when I'm operating from my heart and I'm using my heart, not my head, not my ego, mm -hmm. and I'm operating from here, I'm in alignment with Oshun. And Oshun is therefore able to use me as a vessel to place her ashe on this earth. Ashe. And I have I have an example of that. So I used to go to Kuwa all the time, right? And I used to bring small groups of people to do their initiation, whether it's Ocha, Palo. One time I brought a group that just wanted to hang out on the beach. That was my mom and my cousins. But usually it was for like religious purposes. And one time I brought a group, they were coming to for initiation. And before we do initiation, I take them around Havana to show them around. Sure. And I was, I will never forget this. I'm in Havana 
and I'm showing them the Bacardi house. Bacardi rum used to be, is from Cuba, it's from Santiago de Cuba. And then the, in Havana, there's a big factory. You can see the Bacardi emblem, you know. And so I was just showing them the history of, you know, of things just so they could get a little feel for Cuba before they go into the initiation. Mm -hmm. So we're walking, right? And I hear drumming. Mm. And now this is like, it's Cuba. There's tambos <laughs> every day. There's bembes every day. Even on Christmas, there's gonna be some drumming. But this drum was like pulling me like this. Oh. It was really low. But it was like, mm. and I don't think, you know, I can't just go and follow a drum. I have these people here. When you take people to Cuba, you gotta make sure they're good. They might be hot. They might have to use the bathroom. Like, I can't get off my course. But the drum was like this. Mm. So I said, I said, come on, y'all. We got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And I followed the sound of this drumming. And as I got closer, my body started to tingle. Ooh. And... At the, the 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 place where the drumming was, the door was open. Now I'm from Brooklyn, okay. I don't just walk into people's houses. I don't do that. But it was so the force was so strong. It was I was in here. I walk into this house. I have seven people with me. Wow. Inside the house, there was a man who was sick. And he was doing an obra, a work with Oshon. Um, and he needed five daughters of Oshon to walk around him and to clean him. Only four showed up. When I walked through that door, I made the fit. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they saw me. I, I had my idea. They said, Tu tienes a chocho? Like, you, you have Oshon? I said, Yes. They said, Dale, dale. Mm. And we, we did the, the work. We cleaned it with different things. And then they did a tambor for song. And they gave us champagne and they gave us cake. But that's just one of those things that when you when I'm in here, mm. Oshun is working through me. That's Onioka. Ooh. Ooh. Onioka. Oh wow. That's powerful. I could, I don't know if it's because I've, I've been, I've been to Cuba, but I could just, I just could see it. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful and powerful. Mm -hmm. Wow. So <laughs> I'm wondering, everybody that was with you was probably just so, so blessed to be able to experience that, especially before initiation, because you're like, what to expect, you know? Right. I was like, look, this is cool. I like, you gotta just roll with it. <laughs> Come with yeah. me. Yeah. And we were well received. We were well received. And they gave, they fed us. You know, it was just like, it was as if it was, of course, it was destiny. It was meant to be. But it was a beautiful experience of faith and of heart and of being here, you know. And it was a beautiful experience for them because they got to experience a tambor in Cuba before they, you know. Yeah, so. that's not that's not common at all. Like to go to a tambor, to go to a bimbe, like <laughs> you don't just get the invitation, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. But they did what well, they did that day. That's that's incredible. So, how did you even get into the tradition? Um, were you called and pulled in that same way, or? Yeah. So, I was eighteen years old. And I was a I was a dance major at Howard University, and part of my training as a dance major, we had to have a internship every summer with a different dance company. And so I was supposed to go to Dallas, but something happened, <laughs> and um, I wasn't able to go. Destiny, you know. So I was then transferred to go to a, a internship in New York with Catherine Dunham to study with Catherine Dunham. Mm. 
Oh, wow. And Catherine Dunham is one of the biggest influences of my life. And she's literally the reason why I do everything I do. She is an icon and everything. Peace and blessings upon her. Ibae, love her. So at the time, you know, she's alive and she is a she is a priestess of in the Vodun tradition. Mm -hmm. So as part of like the opening part, they had all these dancers from Haiti come, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm from New York, so I had taken West African dance before. I had, you know, I wasn't new to it, but I had never. So the the Haitian dancers come, right? Then they had the Cuban dancers come. Mm. Girl. I, there was a woman in the front. I will never forget. It was like a whole bunch of people. And they were all, they had red sashes around their waist. And they came and they were dancing Shango. And there was a woman <laughs> with locks from her. She had locks down to her feet. Mm. And they went. <laughs> and I said, what? And it was like, in that moment, I knew. This is my destiny. This is me. Like, it was so foreign, but it was home. Yeah. It was so, it just blew me away and bust open my heart and my soul. I said, what is this? And then um, a couple months later, I went back to school. You know, I'm at Howard, and a Cuban guy was giving a dance class. They didn't allow me to take the dance class, and my faculty oh, didn't really like me at Howard. But anyway. So I stayed and I watched the class. Now, in this class, they're doing Yamaya. They were dancing Yamaya, and the skirts were swirling and the drum. I said, there it is again. Mm. What is this? This is like, it was calling me. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm not letting this get away. So I found the, the person who was teaching the class. I found out where he was. He was in, in Merlin. You got to say Merlin. <laughs> my DRV people, you guys say Merlin. <laughs> so I took three buses, went, took the class, loved it. And after I took the class, the Afro Cuban class, they were like, you know, you have something. Why don't you audition for the company? Mm. I said, okay, okay. You know, <laughs> I auditioned for the company, I got in, started dancing no later than I want to say two months. I had a dream. Mm. It was a tornado. Okay. At the top of the tornado was an African woman like this. Ooh. Ooh. And she I'm said, good. she said, Ooh, she said, I am Oya. Mm. But when she spoke, the ground was shake. Like she like she was speaking from the ground. Mm. And so, now this is a long time ago, right? This is before the internet was a thing. This is before, you know, and you, this is before you had the internet on your phone. So I went back to the dance class, the next rehearsal, and I knew anyone that had beads and anyone that was in white would know what's up, would know what this was. So I went to a girl, and she was in all white, and she had her beads. And I was like, Who's so yeah? <laughs> now she is a she was a new priestess of Oya. She's a of new course. initiate. Of course, right? I love it, love it. And she was like, "Girl, she was like, let me take you to my godfather," and that's how I started. Mm. It was like I had Oya, and then like a week later, Shango came to me, and then a week later, it was Eshu. So by that time, she was like, "Girl, just." coming all in dreams that. all in dreams wow they were wow. showing me and she was like girl you need a greeting <laughs> <laughs> As a tr yeah you gotta know somebody yeah. it's like you get put in particular places um <laughs> they want to know what did Shango say <laughs> you get put in particular places to be able to be introduced to somebody like but yes please what did what did Shano say 
Shango came before me and he was dancing. He didn't say anything in terms of words, but he showed me his regality and he showed me everything about him through his, he was just like, he turned, he asked out gold. He was just like, yo, I'm, I'm Baba. Okay. <laughs> he was dancing. And then my, my dream with Eshu was the, I was, um, I was wearing all white and then someone spills like red sauce on me mm. and a little Eshu came. He said, you have to get clean. You have to get clean. And he mm. showed me the, the people who initiated me that he showed me them. He said, huh? they're going to clean you. You show me their face. Okay, you just keep yeah. blowing my mind. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's that's all I can say right now. That's so powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, the magic. And there was a Bible who said something. I wish I could remember his words. Maybe I got to ask uh, my husband what he said, but it's not magic. It's just, it's something else, but that's so powerful. Yeah, yes, the power of dreams. Yes, it is. Mm. And to remember, because we don't always remember our dreams, um, but to remember to come back with that messaging. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. There's some dreams that you just can't forget, though. They yeah. kind of rock, they rock your world in a way you can never forget, you know. Indeed. Um, wow, we have a lot more questions than we've ever had in <laughs> while I've been doing these. A lot of comments, but more questions than this one. Any advice for those that feel a calling but don't know which way to go? I would say first, there's a glare. Let me see. The first thing to do is to set up a space, a sacred space in your house for your egg room and for your ancestors. Because your ancestors is the foundation for all of Orisha. It's your ancestors. And your ancestors will help you to find your teachers. So a sacred space, a white candle, a glass of water. You change the water every week or when it starts to bubble. Mm -hmm. And you say what you want and your teacher to be i want a teacher who's open-minded i want a teacher who teaches i want a teacher of integrity you say specifically please ancestors the ancestors that you know for libation you call their name honorable ancestors i'm here before you and i'm looking for guidance and then be patient oh. have faith and your teachers will come but let let it start with the guidance from the ancestors. Two very powerful, well, three very powerful things. First, the ancestors, of course. Um, two, to ask, like, for what it is you want in a teacher, because sometimes we people can get so caught up in just wanting a teacher, wanting to know more that you're not really directing your intentions. And um, let me set it right here, sweetie. Thank you. And then um, patience. Whew. Patience is, is so important, especially in this tradition, um, in life, of course, mm -hmm. but definitely I found in this tradition is patience. It's patience. Really that, yeah. that. Know that your teacher will come because of your impatience then you might be so um not desperate but so searching for and thirsty for that that you might miss the one that's meant for you by going but with the first one that comes yeah yeah 
it is very true <laughs> it is very true yeah yes she says thank you for that confirmation or they say thank you for that confirmation um my next question has to deal with like lukumi and why you chose lukumi but i'm seeing that um you know you saw in your dreams um but just being in a tradition for for so long mm -hmm. um and being in different communities and you know and traveling and dancing do you see like any distinct um differences and sameness uh between like lukumi and ifa like isheshe i see more similarities than you can say differences you know i think it's um the essence is the same i think that i had to go lukumi first but to be honest with you the la for the last two years all my readings have been in sheshe oh. i did even when i had my son we did a shantaya for him so even before i got pregnant i've been going that way but i do see why i needed to go through lukumi and i'm thankful that i did sure. um for me in my destiny for example just to be very transparent a lot of my signs speak of ifa mm. speak about ifa ifa serving ifa serving ifa 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 so in lukumi that translates to you have to marry a baba lao ah okay and it's to the point where some of my my elders you know, they're lagwa lagwa. They're old, old, <laughs> old school. Stuck yeah. in their ways for better, for worse. They wouldn't even teach me divin the Kauri divination because they're like, well, you're not going to use it because you're going to be living with a Baba Lao. Oh, wow. So. Even as I, an Oshun. Wow. Even as an Oshun. Because you have to always honor the highest divination which would be if i if i'm living with a baba law but i know in my heart because ianifa doesn't exist in Lukumi. Mm -hmm. but i know in my heart that if i had done my work in nigeria i would be at ianifa and not saying that it's too late but just knowing that there's different the ways that the Odu is read is different because Yanifa doesn't exist in Lukumi. So it can be limiting sometimes. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder. I've I've heard a lot about um uh Ianifas and whether it's new or I don't know, but that's that's interesting to say that it doesn't exist in in Lukumi. I I didn't know that for sure. Well, it might. So I've heard that it's evolving. My house is old. My godmother is in her late seventies. My Yubona, King Kamashe, Winkolo Day, and so you know she's been crowned Obatala for forty two years. And so there, there, that is her way, for better or for worse. But I have heard that it is evolving. I haven't experienced it, but I have heard that it is evolving, so. I should, I should. Yeah, I, I want to definitely stay up on that um, and just making all those different connections. Um, and even like in terms of like the roads of Oshun, um, like for my initiation, it was just like it's Oshun, mm -hmm. you know, it's just Oshun, it's Oshun, Oshogbo, you know. So I'm curious if you 
could talk about just the different roads of Oshun and Lukumi. And if you wanted to speak to the particular road that um, you are aligned with. So in Lukumi, you have several roads. There, there's no actual agreement on how many. Some say 15, some say five. But I would say the major, um, more popular is Ibu Kole, Ololodi, Ibu Yemu, Ibu Aparo, Akaro, and Yeyekari. My Oshun Ro is Ibu Kole. Ibu Kole is known as the most, I would say, in a good way, witchy Oshun in that Ibu Kole energy is like, is like making potions and talismans and oh, mm. you know, I, you're looking for your divine love. Let me make you this, this soap with honey to attract them. Oh, you want a baby. Let me make you these waist beads <laughs> so that your baby can come now from Orum. Mm. Brucole makes potions and makes things with her hands to, to heal and works with herbs, more known as that. And the Ibukole is also, um, the vulture is sacred to Ibukole. You know, so like when Ubukole dance, you know, it's this movement of the arms because you're you're imitating or expressing the the vulture aspects. And then Ololo D is the ocean that's known as the Apete B, the more serious ocean that walks closely with Orumila. Her colors are um, yellow and green. She's known to be like the more serious one. And Ibu Yamu, the one of souls. Yege Kari is like the most makeup, happy, <laughs> you know, essence. But it's all Oshun. At the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, it's all Oshun, you know. Indeed. So, yeah. Indeed. I love it. And I and I wanted to offer that to those who are watching um, to, you know, just offer insight mm -hmm. um, that you just you just don't get often um, or you may read, but you're like, oh, this is Google. So I don't really know. Right, right, right. You know, I love that. Um, we talked about the vulture yesterday on yesterday's live, too. And um, um the referencing of peacock and how you know because i asked her i was like is the peacock really to do with Oshun? you know is that a thing or did it come about in in terms of traveling to the diaspora and so um it is it definitely has to do with Oshun. so i give i give thanks for that um how long is initiation in the Lukumi system for Oshun in particular? It is 365 days plus seven days. So that's 372 days that you are wearing all white, mm -hmm. that you are coming home and you are we have three months where you're eating on the floor on some tradition, sleeping on the floor and white comb, white sheets, white shoes, you know, no one that's not a priest or your husband or partner can touch you and your, or your family, your family too can touch you. No placing money directly into someone's hand. You don't have to put it down. And it's basically a process of rebirth and purification of your path, purification of your destiny. Because sometimes we get off of our alignment for our destiny. And so I feel like Oshun, I can't see. And I feel like Oshun is like, I don't want you to see any of this. I just want you to talk. The sun is like 
brightening up your face so much. So I imagine you I'm cannot. Like, you, I can't see you. You see, you see me. I <laughs> yep, I can see you. You shining. <laughs> yeah, I see. So it's a it's a year of purification, a year of being a baby, a year of connecting, and really, it's called Yawo. Yawo means a bride of your Orisha. So the same way that you would connect with your husband or your wife, you are married to your Orisha, so you can be in alignment with the energy of that Orisha and know how to walk with them and know how to walk in the world with that ashe on your head. I love that. I love that. Wow. 372 days. Girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so within that process, I'm assuming there's, well, is there a lot of teaching going on during that process, or are you just really learning Oshun or, or the Arisha? You, there is teaching. It depends on your house. There is teaching because your initiation now you are you have the tools to that are open for you to um, work more closely with your Arisha because you have them. Mm -hmm. Some houses teach more than others. Some godparents, it depends on the house. But really and truly, it's also a time of, of now you have your ita. And this is something that I teach to my godchildren. Your ita is literally a blueprint to mm -hmm. live your purpose and your destiny. You have like your own roadmap mm -hmm. to greatness. Shit. And and it's a lot of information at first. We receive, you know, several reaches at once. So it's a lot to digest. And so you do have that year of not being out in the world to really meditate on how you want to show up now that you are a priest. Mm -hmm. How do you want to show up in the world knowing what you know now? That's another thing for anyone that... Um, that has never got a reading before that may be on here. Once <laughs> you have a reading, <laughs> come on. <laughs> once the Orisha speak to you and it tell you something, you can't act like you didn't hear it. Once okay. you know, you know. You can't if Oshun says, um, the part the person that you're with. It's not good for you, honey. You can't be like, well, I don't know. <laughs> no, she's saying it's time that you have to think about your exit plan. Yes. So, so I always tell people, you know, and, and it takes a long time to live in your ira. That's what I teach. Live in your ira. As a priest, you have ita. Your ita is the blueprint to living in your ira, And it's so individual. That's what I love. It's individual to you. When you live as a priest in your ira, you are in alignment and connected to your Arisha. And your Arisha can, can, can therefore, you can be a vessel for your Arisha to do their work. And to help your community, to help your family, you know, That's it's right. deep. It's not just about you. It's about your community. You mm -hmm. know, I became, I, that's why I like all of my companies, my businesses, I have two. They're all named Kole. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I'm clear that I used to have a dance studio. The people who walk through that door in my dance studio, they're not coming for Maya Luisa. Uh -huh. They're coming for Oshun. For sure. And when I make, when I create jewelry, it's not me. I go into a trance. And that's why the, the way speech do what they do for people. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's Kole. It's not me. It's Oshun. It's Oshun. Yes. But I had to learn to live in my ERA.
<clears throat> I say, I so I was gonna ask you something else, but I, I'm definitely curious and was gonna get to um the weight speeds. Did that um I know you spoke about dance and that came first, you know, that kind of drew you. But um what about the weight speeds? Did that come after initiation to Oshun? Girl. The waist, I have been making waist beads since I'm 10 years old. Wow. I didn't even know what they were. But I knew at 10 years old, I'm going to take this necklace that my father's girlfriend bought me, and I'm going to take this piece of turquoise that my mama got me and put it around my waist. I just knew. And I'm the artist of my family. My family is full of, like, you know, lawyers and teachers and stuff. I'm the artist, the only one. So I right. thought, I'm doing something different. I was like, oh, <laughs> no, this is me, black sheep of the family. I'm putting jewelry around my waist. I'm something mm -hmm. different. And I wore it for five years. And then I went to African dance class. And I'm in the, the changing room mm -hmm. in African dance class. And then I see everybody had waist beat. I was like, Oh, this, this is a thing? <laughs> this, is, this is something? And there was wow. an elder there. And I told her, I was like, I don't know, ever since I'm 10, I've been wearing these around my, around my waist. And she was like, that was your ancestors. That was your intuition. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So that, that came, you know, instinctually when I was 10. And then when I was like, I think like early 20s, I started adding citrines. I was a broke college student. I was like, well, I need some money. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> so I started adding, that's when I started incorporating the, the semi-precious stones. But also as part of my training before initiation was I used to string up the leggings for my godmother. Ah, so sure. I used to, you know, I used to say, oh, Madrina, like, I feel so, it's so therapeutic for me. And she's like, here, come on, here's some more therapy. She was just... <laughs> so I, I recognize the patterns and the colors have a shade. The, the patterns, like, even when I create, for me, there's masculine numbers, there's feminine numbers, there's... <laughs> masculine stones is feminine stones so i yes. i i recognize that the power of beating and the, the power of color and then incorporated the stones on top of that so i've been mm. beating for a long time Ashe, Ashe. someone said do you still make race beats i didn't see anything on the website yes she does are you currently do you have a new collection out right now i have three new collections but they're not out so <laughs> what happened is um i will never stop making waist beads y'all there's nothing i don't love about making waist beads i just have to um readjust some things because i used to have my own design studio where i had my space and due to current events had to move that design studio into my home and when I start opening up my business, I get so many orders. I need help, you know, mm -hmm. distance. And so I can't have just anyone up in my house due to the current situation of the world. I have a young baby. So once things shift, you know, then I will be open for the site will be back up and you'll be able to get all the waste fees you want. But now I'm just doing consultations. But I will never stop making waste fees. Don't worry. It's, it's just a little pause. A needed pause. A needed a pause. Fine pause. <laughs> I say. Um, sis said her bees completely shifted the trajectory of my life. I will you. Ashe. Um, can an Orisha speak to you without being a priest? Ooh, you must have came in late. <laughs> she went in in the beginning, sis. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. 
That's yeah. Crazy. When you watch the recording, um, I think that was Zoe. When you watch the recording, um, you'll be able to hear the, the different stories that she shared with us in regards to um, communicating with the Orisha before she initiated. So mm -hmm. it's very powerful. Very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, how does, how was Ogun shown up in your life? Ogun? Baby, we ain't talking about Ogun, right? <laughs> I, I don't mean no disrespect to you. I know that um, it's not often we get to hold forums like this. Um, so, but if you want to answer that, you're more than welcome. Um, I don't know if she meant Ogun or Oshun, but if you want to answer, you're more than welcome to answer. Um, Ogun Moni, hey, first of all, I have big love for Ogun. Ogun and shows up for me in many ways of um, ushering me into my greatness, pushing me, always having my back, always being there to catch me. Ogun Moni, hey, that's all I can say. You know, big love for Ogun. I have Ogun in my house, you know, in the shrine room. So I... Oh. I think it's important to acknowledge that in Lukumi, every time that they initiate an Ogun, they reenact the Pataki where Oshun, with her sweetness, pulls him back into humanity. He mm. was in the forest, he was working, he was working, he was working. Nobody could bring Ogun back. He was spoken. You know Ogun is how <laughs> he not put in that work. Okay. <laughs> no emotion, just work, work, work. And it was the sweetness of Oshun that brought him back to humanity and said, Listen, my love. Let's have some balance. Okay, you can still do your work, but come back over here. Rest okay. a little bit. Drink some water. And it, and I think that speaks beautifully to the marriage. As you know, <laughs> <sis>. <laughs> the sacred marriage and the sacredness between those two energies is so powerful. It's a balance of life, you know? Ogun helps us to get that money to get things done mm -hmm. where we have a goal. We want to evoke that Ogun energy, but then we also want to evoke Oshun and say, hey, you know what? I need to rest. I need to play some music and dance around my house. Mm -hmm. I need to drink of cool water, take a shower and put on some perfume. Mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> and then the chat I know you can't see it sis. <laughs> Ogun stepped in the chat at the right time apparently <laughs> oh gosh yes absolutely correct um, is there anything that you wanted to uh, demystify about Oshun or anything else you wanted to share Absolutely. I'm so happy you had this. <clears throat> Oshun is not just painting sunflowers on your titties. <laughs> Oshun <laughs> is not an Orisha to play with. Indeed. And I'm very serious when I say this because and none of the Orishas. Don't play with none of them. Don't play with any of them. But Oshun, because we live in patriarchy, right? Oshun represents femininity. Oshun represents water. Oshun represents joy and all those things. So because you live in patriarchy, don't confuse that for weakness. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Because you don't want to ever get Oshun to not give you her ashe and her love because without the ashe of Oshun, without the energy of Oshun, life is not worth living 
let's be clear but because of this patriarchy that we see and experience they have reduced oshun energy to just sexual to just a, a compartmentalized box oshun is everything she's a mother she's a healer she's fresh water Oh, shit. And many people, and this thing about Oshun is that she commands respect. Mm -hmm. She commands respect of her. She commands respect of her children. Don't oh, get shit. it twisted. We are very nice. We are sweet humans. But with all that <laughs> sweetness, there's another side. And I have witnessed mm. this firsthand in Cuba. There was a brother there, young man, definitely in his machismo, you know, living in the patriarchy. And he was, it was the day before he was going to initiate to Shango. So, you know, he feeling himself. He's like, eh, yeah. mad yeah. time. <laughs> you know, he's feeling himself. He about to initiate to Shango, you know. And he got a little loose with the lip. And started talking crazy about Oshun. Mm. And after a, a, I know when Oshun is disrespected. It's, a, it's like a, a match goes on in my head and I just get real quiet. But I could feel it. Yeah. And he said, I don't even remember what he said, but I remember I felt it. And I told him, I said, I said, be careful what you say about Oshun. I told him that. I said, be careful. He's like, ah, 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 you know, feeling himself. I think he had a beard too. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he was just in his pride and yeah. ego. So the next day he initiated to Shango. The next day he had Ita. <laughs> Who spoke to him? She said, you must respect me. You must respect my children. Uh -huh. She forbade him to, he can't marry a daughter of Oshun. Oh, wow. Now, and we make great partners, so I felt bad for him because we are just, and not only that, his life, every year he has to do a big not talking no little chicken i'm talking an expensive wow. because oshun commands respect so wow. living in this patriarchy we have been groomed to not honor the feminine yeah and oshun commands respect for her and for her children therefore respect the feminine Shit. Respect women. Shit. Respect mothers. Respect pregnant women. Mm. If you see a woman, she have her baby stroller. Ask her, can I lift the stroller for you? Shit. If you know a pregnant woman, you know her well. Rub her feet. Ask if you can rub her feet or send her some food. Respect women. And respect Oshun. Oshun is nothing to play with. Because she's the Orisha that will take the longest to come back around. <laughs> she will take the longest. Yeah, very patient. Very patient. <laughs> Quick, too. Okay. Quick with the blessings. Right. You can be patient on the other, on the other right. hand. Right. Oshun will give you more <laughs> than you could ever imagine and ask for. That's the beauty of it is that, you know, you might ask for a cup of water and she gives you a whole waterfall in the back of your house. Like, Oshun is <laughs> so giving. I say someone is asking, can you speak on the connection between Oshun and our mothers, the Iyami, or are we keeping this lighthearted? L O L. Well, I don't think anything here has been lighthearted. <laughs> I think. Yah is really giving um, 
<laughs> dropping so many jewels, so many messages, so much insight. Um, so I don't want to just negate that um, at all because she's taking time to be here. Um, also, yesterday we did speak about the connection between Oshun and the Iyami um, on the live. There's there's several lives that are with Oshun priestess. Um, and again, I will open it up to you if you want to answer um, any connections between, if you want to answer that question, um, I will honor the space and, and you if you want to answer. Well, I will be honest with you. I can't, I don't feel comfortable speaking about the Iyami is something that I don't know well. I feel like my, my information on the Iyami at this time is not as expansive to to really share and teach. So that's my answer. Go to the live from yesterday. So, well, the live from yesterday, let me just say, you had to be on the live because you it didn't you couldn't you can't hear it now. <laughs> but I will say that um, a sis was talking about the old do. Um, oh, she mentioned two old do's. But anyway, it was about. Um, hold on, sorry. Let me see. Let me go back to that question. It was about um, how Oshun was basically um, turned away. And then many, not many, but at least these two old that she was talking about, it was in particular where Oshun was turned away. To, um, yes, also Meji and also um, 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 uh, Oshea Tora. And um, it spoke to just how, you know, Oshun was just like not respected. It was just like, oh, get out of here, you woman. And that's when she created, She when she went away, she created the, the Iyami. Um, so I'll just say that just briefly, she, she that was spoken on. And every, every live is different. So I try to keep them fresh and unique. Um, still asking some of the same questions, but try to keep it fresh and, and unique um, for everyone coming on. But yes, oh wait, you circling. I think the connection is going in and out right now. Ah, okay. Well, it's 2.02, y'all. Um, I didn't want it to cut off like that, but I actually, I have another live. Um, also demonstrates that you can be dope and get shunned. How do you feel the union of, uh, of Shango and Oshun? How do you feel the union? Of... I'm not clear on that question. Um, so if you would like to um, come on to the next live, uh, I do have another sister coming on for an hour. Um, and again, you know, it's going to be different information because it's, it aligns with her story. Um, and her energy so you're welcome to join and um and ask the question again about it i mean um but just try to really just be respectful with it you know like um i don't want to dig too much into everyone's lives and ask them their old do's and this and that because that's very personal this is a live form that i want to keep um, informative at the same time, um, respectful. So I'm okay. I'll let you in real quick, sis, just so we can end it beautifully. Did I say, I said yes, right? Okay. Yo, you know what my, <laughs> my, my iPhone says, my iPhone says too hot. It needs to cool down. Uh, so I know we have some powerful people on here. Y'all hot, honey. 
But I'm going to fan my phone. <laughs> I say. I say. But well, sis, we actually... Uh-oh. We actually are going to close. So if you had any last um, words, um, because I'm going to do another another live, another drift and go with another priest. And I appreciate, appreciate so much your time and the stories. Like, so, so, so powerful. Um, and I know a lot of y'all really felt that energy and connect with that. And we'll probably reach out to you for deeper and more information. Um, so. I do have something to say. I want to thank you. I want to thank you because there's so many priests that are disgruntled with <clears throat> what they see on the internet about Oshon. And you took that and you said, okay, well, I'm going to change the narrative. And your song is beautiful. And your album is, I didn't listen to the whole album yet, but I already know. I already know. And so I hope and I will and I pray that Oshun continues to bless you. Ashun. That she continues to shower you with blessings. That she continues to shower your family with blessings. That your that your song and your art and your music may be received well throughout the world. May you continue to make great music. May you continue to honor Oshun. May you be blessed with love, happiness, wealth, health, 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 and greatness, and continue to do the great work that you're doing. I know that you bring honor to Oshun. And I know that Oshun is very pleased with you. And may she continue to bless you and your family, sis. Thank you for this. Because I was looking forward to it all week. It was giving me tingles. Oh, I get to talk about Oshun. I don't usually do this. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for this. And thank you for this opportunity to, to shift the narrative. Let's bring some people who are real practitioners to really talk about Oshun. And I'm I'm so happy and honored to be a part of it. And I know that Oshun is happy too. So many blessings to you. Many blessings to you and to the family. Beautiful family. Love seeing y'all. And also, you know, you're very inspirational. Because you have, you know, you're a wife. You have a lot of children. But you're still out here doing your work, doing your making music, making music videos, you know. It's, <laughs> it's inspiring, sis. It's inspiring. It's inspiring. So thank, thank you. you and thank you for your ashe. Thank you. I oh, I appreciate that, sis. <laughs> I really, really do. I I accept and, and receive all those blessings that you just that you just spoke and gave to me. Um, and I wish them all back to you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. That means a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Sure. I appreciate you. And um, talk soon. I want to join the class for Friday. So I will text you offline. Um, or maybe I just need to go to the link in a bio. <laughs> um and because I want to do, I want to do the class on Friday. I, um, it's very powerful. Oh, Sean brought me that class, you know. But that we'll save that for an another live. That's, that, okay. that's definitely. I'm... You can't get more Sean than that because it's intuitive. It's the womb. It's femininity. It's completely out of your out of your head and just in your heart and your womb. It's, that's what I need. That's what I need. So I will be joining. Um, I'm st I'm still going to text you after this. Um, but <laughs> and you might just say, just go to the link in the bio. But <laughs> <I'm> Thanks <still> <laughs> me. Thanks <laughs> me. Okay. Beautiful, sis. Enjoy today. Or yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, mama. Thank you.